Okay, we're here with John Kotar and his cabin up here in Cable. Uh, this is for the Birch Leggings uh, website. We're going to uh, interview John on a couple questions. This is uh, Berkey 2012. It is February 21st, I believe. Um, John, tell us about being, being one of the only two now uh, founders uh, that have skied every race. Tell us about the new Spirit of 35 and what that means. Well, the Spirit of 35 kind of builds on the founder's idea. Uh, there have been originally 10 founders uh, that have uh, completed the first 10 Berkeys and have since then traditionally been wearing these red bibs, founder bibs. Uh, and wearing one of these bibs, if you're in a crowd, as I have been for years, uh, you will experience things that you would perhaps not think of. Everybody wants to talk to you. Everybody talks to you, and you can't always, of course, reply. It takes a lot of energy to do that. But it became pretty obvious that these bibs mean something to skiers. I would hear comments some, always, how many have you done? And I give them a number, and a young fellow would say, I want to do 50. So it clearly inspires people to keep coming back and staying with the Berkey uh, and, and help building this tradition. So anyway, the 10 founders, of course, uh, shrunk you know, to five, three, whatever. The numbers are dwindling. And uh, we thought some of the folks on the board have been talking about this whole idea about actually the, 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 the meaning of uh, these red bibs that uh, we've had over the years. And we started asking questions, how can we extend the idea of the red bib? And uh, a friend of mine, Berkey board member, John Layton, and I had this original discussion. And we just said, well, let's print some red bibs in the future and find a way of, uh, of uh, assigning it to people. So how many should we do? Uh, well, the first idea was easy. We need more red bibs. Well, how many? And I started thinking about, hmm, I started thinking to the origin of this race way back in 73, and it's, it dawned on me right away. There were just 35 of us on, on the starting line at the time. So I said, well, what about 35? So 35 became an obvious number. And John says, perfect, we can do 35 bibs. Now, what do we put on them? They're not founder bibs, but so how do we do this? That took a little longer. We didn't settle on that at all. I says, I'll think about it. So on the way home from here, from our cabin, uh, my wife uh, and my daughter, Katie, we're, as we always do, talk about these things, and we're fishing for uh, something that we could put on a bib. And we came up, we had a number, 35, to work with. And then, honestly, we started talking about our fellow founders, and namely Dave Landgraf, whom we just lost this year. And we vividly remember being at his uh, uh, funeral services and his favorite song was being played, The Spirit in the Sky. Uh -huh. And we started tossing around the idea, Spirit, Spirit, we don't want to put Spirit in the Sky because that's already taken kind of like this. And after some going back and forth, you know, such things of Spirit of 76, Spirit of St. Louis, these things exist. And then my daughter comes up, how about Spirit of 35? And bingo, I thought, that's it. I said, I can't think of anything better. And um, I then proposed this idea to the Berkey board that we create these 35 bibs and then we put down the spirit of 35. It was unanimously accepted. And there they are. So we had this year, uh, and the way they're assigned, of course, we take the top uh, 35 people with the most Berkeys, excluding founders, uh, and we assign these numbers to them. Now, the important thing about uh, the Spirit 35 bibs is that they will be in every wave because people with this with this number of birdies completed do come from all sorts of waves. So they will be embedded, basically, in a, in a race, which is what we want. The idea for these bibs, again, is to inspire uh, and to build the, the tradition, and it should be, they should be available to everyone. So, so how it works, John, is that it's always in each Berkey, it's the 35 people that have the most yes, Berkeys in. That's so right. it's going to be ever-changing. That's right. And there will be, it will be, uh, it will be 
changing, but there will be some individual probably who just keep coming back who will be in that group for probably quite a few years. Right. And in that sense, they will start to resemble the founders, the founders who just kept coming back. The difference only being they weren't there originally, but they will have that kind of longevity with the race and will represent the same kind of inspiration, we hope, uh, that the founders have. Yeah. What a wonderful story. And to think that uh, Katie came up with the with the idea it's that is very uh, gratifying to yeah. me that she came up uh, with, with yeah. that idea herself. It was quite a loss with Dave this year. How did uh, you you take that? Because he was one of the three that had done every Berkey and yes. the tragic bicycle accident. The loss of Dave is impossible to really describe or in any way evaluate. First of all, it is nothing less than an absolute shock. A lightning bolt that got us all when it happened. But then, of course, uh, we we reflect on who Dave was and what he represented to his friends and to the Birkebeiner. And clearly, obviously, I've given it quite a bit of thought. Uh, the forty years, practically forty years, of doing something like this together, even not, if not hand in hand, but being in this in spirit, all it. it it, it kind of welds some kind of a bond that uh, we can't really describe, but just saying that it exists, I think most skiers will appreciate what that means. And I think it goes beyond founders as well. Uh, people who uh, have been skiing this and seeing the founders in the race at all along, they have identified with, with these folks, and Dave in particular. Dave has been an unbelievably fantastic skier, not just in terms yes. of longevity, right. uh, with his age, 62. He was first wave. Still, uh, right. First wave, first uh, elite wave. Elite wave, yeah. Absolutely. So I think in skiing, uh, in, I think he established a kind of a record that will probably never be broken. Yeah. Will never be broken, that's the way I put it. Uh, but in a sense, being visible like that uh, was visible to skiers who have not personally known him, right. know of him. Yeah, it was such a tragic loss. It's a, it, he will be remembered, as I say, I'm sure that all of us uh, will be thinking of him uh, for most of the race, at least me and Ernie and some other founders will probably have him with us at all times as long as we ski. Will you be wearing one of the red hats? Uh, red hats? Uh, I don't have one yet, but chances are I will. Yep. And the, for our audience, the red hat is uh, in memory of Dave, in right? In memory the, of Dave, yes. Right. yes. Uh, I wanted to ask you one more uh, question. Right next to you is the Tony Wise Berkey Spirit Award. Could you tell us about that? Well, uh, uh, Tony Wise Berkey Spirit Award, uh, Birchlingers came up with this one, uh, what, three, four years ago. And the idea here, of course, was to uh, really... Uh, recognize individuals who have had particularly uh, some uh, you know, great impact uh, on a development and growth of Birkebeiner, its roots, and so forth. And uh, again, it took some time in developing the idea, but it kind of came naturally. And as first recipients, uh, we thought uh, the logical ones would be uh, Sven Week, uh, who was Tony Wise's advisor at the time, Sven was a well-known uh, Swedish uh, coach. He actually coached the U.S. Olympic team way back in the 60s. And actually designed, if that's the word, at least uh, developed the original Berkey Trail from uh, Hayward to Cable. So uh, then closely on his heels came uh, Marty Hall, another U.S. Olympic coach who was also into developing uh, racing trails. And Tony uh, contracted him to develop, uh, to improve and really develop a permanent Berkey Trail, which he did. It's mostly the trail we still ski on. And finally, last year, uh, uh, we thought of Frances Wise, one of uh, Tony Wise's daughters, who was truly Tony's right-hand person during all of his days of running the race. She was the registration, she was everything. Uh, and well-deserved uh, uh, recipient, I think, of this award. 
And uh, here we have, this one hasn't been awarded yet, so perhaps you're going to post this after the event. Uh, David Nelson, and I will talk about him uh, at this year's uh, Berkey Awards on Sunday morning. That's great. Well, thank you so much, John. Appreciate the time. You're welcome. Okay. Great.